Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. There's something weird about the bottom of this fucking water bottle, and I have to lean it up against... It's. I'm getting so mad right now. Why? We just started the show, Dan. How are because you this angry already? I just want things to work the way they're supposed to. Well, that's not the world Look at anymore. that. It's leaning for maybe, fuck's Maybe sake. there's too many people on that island. Maybe there was a Tower of Pisa. Oh, boy. It's yeah. Too many fucking guy. Too many people on the island is going to tip over. There it is. Remember that guy? Nice. Oh, yeah. Democratic congressman. Guam, right? Was it Guam? Yeah, yeah was it was. Around? Yeah, the Guam, Guamese people. Fucking idiot. Yeah, the Chamoan, yeah. They're, they're called Guamese, huh? No, actually, they're not. But, yeah, that's what he was saying, that, uh, yeah, there were too many people on the island. I've been to Guam. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good time, but, I, yeah. Up and down, real up and down. Did you put yeah. a level on the ground at any point? Like, up, oh, too many people on the north side. Let's yeah, get right. down here. Tour over there. Yeah. I want you introduce yeah, your beef fry here to the audience. Yeah. This is Dan Jeffrey Day? W. Taylor. He was, uh, let's see, he was in the Marine Corps back in the day. No one really gives a shit about that because I think you developed an allergy to crayons and you had to get sent over to the army. No, so. what, I'll tell you what. Go ahead and finish out my bio and I'll tell you why I did the, tra- <laughs> the transfer. Over. I like how he knows this show well enough where it's like, hey man, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, finish off the bio, yeah. all of my accomplishments, and then we can get back to me about it, that story. Yeah. He's a scout sniper, came over to uh, us, and well you were in Lurs for a while at Bragg, and then he came over to the 82nd Airborne, deployed with Jared and I to uh, to Baghdad for a little while. And then, uh, you know, we've are, done, are done you guys some- the same age? No, no, he's decades no, older than me, decades. just like you are. I'm like an older brother. Gotcha, gotcha. Gave yeah, a lot of hugs. I, I, I feel like Dan's more of a grandfather to all of us. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, in the pecking order of of myself, Dan, and Jared, that's pretty much how it'd go: big brother, kid brother, and then just the baby pain in the ass. <laughs> Jared, wine, like a little. Uh, yeah. Can you, I say you cunt? Can, yeah, you yeah, can, you can yeah, say whatever. Yeah, you I don't even know bros. why he's on your guys' webpage because your rules are don't be a cunt, don't ever be a cunt, and then you got well, he's no, the one you can started say it. it so. yeah, yeah, but you can say it. You yeah. can say the word cunt as many oh, times. Oh yeah, for well, sure. Yeah, we, any we word you can it. possibly think of except for one, you can say on the show. <laughs> well, my dad's then my dad's a proud father. Can I say cunt yeah, on the air? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can say cunt on the air. Yeah. yeah. Fire away. It's another story about me and a judge saying cunt. Nah, that's a different story. Thick accent. Yeah. Um again, is it He's British Alabama? Alabama, yeah, I was born and raised down there. Big World Tide fan. Uh, <laughs> London, Alabama. London, 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 yeah. Yeah, bunch of pockies down there. Now you're you're a Pittsburgh guy. You were on Drinking Bros News with us um, last week, and we were like, "Hey, man, we got to get you on the show." You're the only person that has an actual connection to Jared and Dan at the same time in their life. What ten years ago when you guys? Oh, were it was yeah. Well, yeah. When we oh eight oh seven oh eight. It was oh six to oh eight. Yeah, it was definitely in the infant stages of what their concept was. But I will say this: that they had a Jared definitely had a vision. He had a vision of what he wanted to do because uh, I don't think he was really good at what he did in the Air Force. He said what he, he says he was. Well, that that's him. He says he's good at everything. <laughs> he says he's good at marriages too. <laughs> um, I, I got a lot of room to talk, but um, <laughs> maybe just the initials JT. Um, no, he had a vision. Jerry was always that guy that uh, everybody liked, mm-hmm. even though you hated him, you liked him. Um, he had a way. He was that guy that brought that room together. I mean, he's just he's the glue, he's the magnet to be you know cliches, but Jerry just had that personality. And he was just so open to communicate with people if it was playing his guitar or uh, helping people with connections or whatever we got into um, in those early days when we were living together mm-hmm. and, and partying and acting like acting a fool. But um, he had a vision. <laughs> and, I mean, I couldn't be any more proud to say that these guys I served with in, uh, during the war in Iraq, but also um, just to be able to call them friends. I mean, yeah, it's funny, man. Even today, I would, I would probably say Jared is the glue of our group. Um, because he put us all together. Yeah. And then uh, from some weird stage or wherever he's at in his life right now, (laughs) he's always managed to stay around all of us and keep everybody communicating and talking and uh, everything you just said, essentially. Um, Because, I mean, we can't talk about where he is today but uh, because we're trying to get them on the show. But you wouldn't believe it, but even from that person's house who is – well, we, we, we can tell you that he's not in county. So. Yeah, you know, he's not in county, right. but he's at a, a... Or getting married again. Well, we don't, we don't know that for We sure. don't know that. <laughs> we can tell you he's at somebody's, an ultra-famous person's house, and... Uh, oh, he posted a picture with him, I think. No, not, not, this, not, not this one. Uh, I'm not talking about Charlie Sheen. I'm talking nope. about somebody else. Yep. 
He posted um, a picture with that is scary. And that because you mentioned it, that those two guys are together. Yeah, I, if we can confirm this, not posting a picture or you, yeah, I'll you look do right it. Now, yeah. And if if so, we'll tell the audience because I was even <laughs> when I got the the video, he was like, "Dude, you're not going to believe where I am." And I'm like, "Hey, man, you're at that guy's house right now. You should not be videoing us." And he's like, "But you got to see this." You know, and that's that's Jared in a nutshell. Where no matter where he is, yeah, he posted it on a story uh, today. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, so he was at Kid Rock's house. Oh, okay. And we're we're trying to get Kid Rock on the show. This was not told to us, Dan and I, right? All, all we said we, was it's, we called him to do a show today, and he goes, "Oh shit, I can't, man. Uh, I'm at Kid Rock's house." What? Yeah, yeah, you got, dude, you got to see this house. He's got the original General Lee at his house, I'm and like, then he just wow, starts crazy going on live video, <laughs> classic Jared. And then, um, you know, talking to us about it and everything. And, and you're just like, what the fuck, man? Uh, he's just that dude. Everybody loves Jared. I've never, he goes. I've never been able to figure out. Uh, I mean, I was, other than the friendship we established through the years, but, you know, when he went through his, uh, the Air Forces, I don't know what they call it, NCOES. It's like graduating junior high, I think. Um, oh, you're talking about when he got promoted? Well, yeah, I went over there when his mom and dad was there. Of course, yeah, yeah. Miss, Mrs. Taylor, hi. Everybody uh, says hi, Mrs. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah, you got to. I mean, it's like, <laughs> wait, what's, what's from the movie? Hey, Miss Jackson. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay your respects <laughs> to Miss Taylor. Do. Yes, you do. Darker um, the berry, the sweeter the juice. That's yeah. what he said. You're talking about Friday, right? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, they're like Freddie Jackson. Um, <laughs> no, but even, even back then, taking pictures of him getting promoted, and we were all there. Uh, and there's even... One thing I can say about Jared that I've been jealous with, I mean, just jealous professionally throughout my career or with, through my career my, before I retired was I got a law, got away with a lot of shit. And I always had a handler. I was kind of like a like a terrorist bomber, like, uh, you know, somebody would go up or um, what the hell we call them? Uh, they wore their vest. Oh, S vest, yeah, suicide bomber. Yeah, suicide yeah. bomber. I always had a handler that out that was higher ranking to me to protect me from the shit that I would do. How Jared got away with everything he got away with. As a fucking E4. Yeah, E4, and E5. Force, yeah. And he, uh, but because <laughs> he had that demeanor, he had that. You, you loved to hate him. You really did. Because you knew that it was sincere. I mean, he was just solid. As there were a him. couple of things he did uh, that really stand out. One, if you guys have watched the drunken debriefs, you saw some of, some of the stuff he and I were doing. Like uh -huh. me running for FOB mayor and all that stupid <laughs> bullshit we did then. Um, one of the other stories that I actually like better than that is um so he carried this there's two parts of this one he carried this uh fake memorandum around about relaxed grooming standards <laughs> he just made it himself right <laughs> but it's, cla cla it's classic jared so he would let his hair grow and grow and grow and uh <clears throat> our sergeant major at the time uh lamarkey knowles who's the biggest piece of shit in the history of the 82nd airborne probably or no, he's he's in a good back. way, or no? They, he ended up becoming uh, division command sergeant major. Yeah, he was the division command sergeant major. He is a piece of shit. So you still dislike him to this yes, day? Yes, no one likes him. I, I've never met a single human being that likes this guy. Um, well, I, I guess I, I guess I tell you, I won't get a, I get a Christmas card every year from him. <laughs> <laughs> you should send it back to him. Uh, so, anyways, the guy comes up to him and he's like talking about his hair and all this other bullshit. And it, it just keeps going on and on for, for weeks, right? And finally, Jared walks into the talk, the command center one day. and uh, it's the tactical operations center? Yeah. The uh, sergeant major walks by him, and he, he goes, uh, what's up, AIM High? Because AIM High was the Air Force motto at the time. And Jared was like, uh, what's up, Army Strong? And he goes, <laughs> and he goes oh, excuse me, my name's Sergeant Major. And he goes, oh, cool, my name's Jared. <laughs> and he just walked, like, just walked out. <laughs> and nothing happened to him? Yep. Correct. That's funny, man. I have no idea how he got away with any of the shit he got So with. with us having the same surname. Yeah. Somehow it got started that we were related. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, Taylor, I, that was going to be my, my next question with the last name Taylor. You guys are Well, not. now that he's become somewhat notorious and famous, I tell everybody we're related anyway. Yeah, why so. not at that point? I mean, so if you're listening, buddy, yeah, you can throw some coin my way. Um, <laughs> so he came out, and I think we played that role that we were related, and uh, this, this uh, command sergeant major and I had no love lost between us two, so it only added more fuel to the fire that he had me upstairs creating problems and then creating problems on the street, and then Jared doing his thing. <laughs> with the Air Force and creating problems there too, so it was kind of twofold. So we, that's how I think that's how it kind of really started. It really, it really was that once we got paired up and we knew there was somebody out there that hated us, then we just 
Hey, man, it's not about love, man. It's about having the same hates. Yeah, that's funny. I've never heard it say, said like that before. Wait, um, relationships don't last because of love, man. Relas- relationships last because you have the same hates. And what are your hates exactly that you guys share? He and I? Mm-hmm. Well, I hate him. He hates me. Authority. Authority. Neither mm-hmm. one of them can deal with authority. That's no, not so much authority. It's the stupidity. I always be okay, <clears throat> if we're going to go down this rat hole, and let's, let's take the long, long train. Why not? All right. So we had this thing in the Army called the NCOER, the Non-Commissioned Officer Evaluation Report. All right. So I'm going to ask you because you got a little mm-hmm. G2 or knowledge about you. The word competence, what is it? Uh, I, I would say, you know, non, non-definition, obviously. Uh, competence is just knowing or having a confident feeling in what you're doing. Okay, so if you don't have a knowing or, un- or confident feeling in what you're doing, you're mm-hmm. then what? Incompetent. Okay, great. Because <laughs> on the first page of the back of the sense where you are, you have a competency rating. So you either... Outstanding. It's one through five. One through five, uh-huh. yeah. You're either outstanding... Uh, exceed the standard, met the standard, uh, below the standard, or you know, or needs needs, needs improvement. Needs improvement, yeah, right? So like let's. It should have been real simple for the military. You either competent or incompetent. Right. No need to go any farther if you check the box to yeah. the left. But the difference between a four and a five, cumulatively over the sections of an NCOER, can be the difference between a promotion or not. Yeah. So if someone just doesn't like you, like oh, he's a four out of five. Yeah. Right. Or they, for some reason they don't want to give you a five. And some of, it, it gets rated like that, too, because uh, if you're an NCO giving out NCOERs and you continuously give fives to everybody, mm-hmm. if you give a four to somebody and they request a review of it, you have to explain why all these people got fives and this person got a four. So a lot of NCOs being lazy and cowarded, cowardly will just give people threes and fours just because they don't – not that I ever had this issue, by the way, because I'm uh, amazing. But, well, uh, you follow all the rules, Dan. I don't. I'm a piece of shit. No, you're, uh, a, you're a rule follower. I'm not. <laughs> Not then, anyways. Uh, at any rate, um, people will do that, too. And it's the same in government service, too. They do the same thing. The, the evaluation reports for people that work for the government are basically the same. And they do the same thing. They're like, they protect the fives, right, for people that they lie. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons for it. But mostly, in my opinion, it's just laziness and cowardice. Like, they don't want to have to defend their position there. It's mm. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of cronyism. It, and I, I watching a couple of you guys' show back, and, and, and Dan said it best, that, you know, being a free thinker, thinking outside the box, or having your own kind of ideology of how things should be. Um, I mean, when we talk about leadership and whatever you do, I mean, you work in the post office, you work at food line, or, or leadership is still leadership. It's the ability to get people to do things. I mean, in common sense. Uh, We're Harris Teeter people here. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are. I'm not. I don't like Harris Teeters because the people in the register always make me feel so belittled that they're better than me. They are Because really? I don't know you. where to go. I, I don't know. I don't know to take my buggy to the person or take my buggy to the side. Buggy. I, I don't know. Buggy, yeah. So you were born in the 1800s in Amish. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> now you laugh, though. My, we just had a big, o- we just had a big Oktoberfest at uh, my, my, my best friend's, and every year he has a great party. We do the leader hosen, and my girlfriend was dressed up in her, in her, in her dirndl and everything. And, of course, I had one for my daughter, too. And she's like, Daddy, we were so dressed like the 1980s. And I'm like, yeah, we are. <laughs> 1980s. To a teenager, actually, she's seven now. Yeah, she's going to be seven. So to a seven-year-old, the 1980s may as well have been 300 years ago. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I'm going to loop back around. What was Jared's score on his uh, one out of five? What did he get? On Oh, who knows? The Air Force, man. They just give shit away. Oh, really? Yeah. They, I mean, you join the Air Force. They just give you medals. It's like, hey, welcome. Hey, congr- congratulations. Here you go. How long did you stay in? I did 25 years. Holy shit. Yeah. So you were in the Marine Corps first. How long did you do in the Corps before you moved over? I did, uh, let's see, six years in the Corps. Then I got out of the Corps, worked for the NGB, which is the National Guard Bureau. I uh, did some bumming around in there. Then the war got ready to kick off, and then uh, we all kind of came back on active duty in '02, right before the mm. war kicked off. So do you get pension and retirement and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I get all that. That's great. Yeah. What do you do now? Um... <laughs> I work part time in retail sales, and I still do a little private contracting, independent contract work for the military. Oh no, shit! Overseas or here? No, no, no more overseas for Daddy. She doesn't want that. I got to stay local. Yeah, and that's a young man's game now. So, do you like those gigs? 
Um, at first I didn't. It took me about a couple of years before I got involved because I walked away. I walked away. I'd had enough of it. Um, but now they're going back and getting with some of the guys in that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, dealing with guys that had retired or whatever, and we just kind of sit around like, yeah, we're just actually we get to be like young soldiers again, all over again with no authority. We can just be the bad mm-hmm. guy or the good guy and just cr- be creative and basically just acting. We're just yeah. acting in what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, it's become a little bit of fun. Anything cool, or is it corporate shit? No, it's all it's all we're it's cool. It's cool. It's what, what, what we're doing, uh, working for the organization, uh, is uh, helping um, the future. Uh, of our special operations community. Okay, cool. So cool. Uh, let's dive into Dan here, D'Anthony, D'Anthony, because that's his real name, and I don't know if you knew that, right? What's what? D'Anthony. D'Anthony. Yeah, that was actually, a, I thought it was Tim. Yeah, it's his full name. Don't ever say my real name on the show. <laughs> yeah. It's so long that it would. It's like uh, if God spoke. Remember Dogma? Yep. If God had spoken, your fucking head would explode. Yeah. That's my full name. It, yeah, it is. You would go insane if you heard it. If, you, if there's, what, 19 vowels, I think? 19 vowels in a row. Yeah. Um, very ooh and e. Yeah. Ooh, uh, ah. Uh, uh, yes. Ooh, e. So this goes back to us. We were talking about the coffee, like a 104 milliliters. That we started. Yeah. yeah. It's just Dan this drop on. Swahili. Um, <laughs> loves Swahili coffee and uh, loves his, his first name. Just keep so it like short this. and simple and move on. I don't, I'm <laughs> what was he that. like back in the day? Was he fucking crazy? Yeah, he's he's he. I mean, I don't know if I've ever really changed. No, he honestly. really he went through a spell when he went to college, which I don't know what happened out there. There was a lot of adult supervision for him, uh, but uh, we stayed in touch periodically through the years. Yeah. And then that when he said he was coming back in this area, I was like, "Dude, we definitely got to get together." Um, we used to do some wild shit together back in the day. Yeah, what so, was it? What, what I, can you talk I, about? We, on we've air? talked about this. We'll, we'll we maybe we'll circle back to the war part, but just back here. At Bragg, uh, I'm, I'm 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 safe for talking about the war shit because it's not talking know. about we've done illegally. Here. So we had uh, I I one of my friends brought a bunch of wormwood absinthe back <laughs> from the Czech Republic. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And um, I think we may have talked about this before. Me, him, and Jared started drinking this thing called an atom bomb, and it's like it's two ounces of wormwood absinthe and two ounces of Everclear. It's one shot. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, like, that mentally just went inside my mind. So that's basically like eight shots because yeah. they're about, like, if it's vodka, it's it's 90% booze. So and in my, in, it's basically like two of those. In my defense, I don't know what I'm drinking. At all. No, I'm well, drinking. No, 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 I told no, you hold on, the time it out. was going to be 20-second timeout. He, he, I, it's going to be rough. All right. Um, I'm a drinker, and I've, probably, I've been drinking my whole life, and I'm, I'm proud of that. But, I mean, a man's <laughs> got to be good at something, right? You know, some people are like, hey, I'm good at making selling stocks. I'm, I'm good at drinking. Yeah. Well, they tell me it's just whatever. Of course, you know, I'd probably get a few in me anyways, and I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Well, the outcome was not th- something that I expected at all. So no, we – so, yeah, two things happened that night. The first one was uh, that we walked outside, and he had taken – I think two of these shots, which is basically like 14 to 16 shots. And we did two of them pretty much back to back within the course of about 20 minutes, I think. Oof. Uh, and um, we walk outside because I think I was going to go smoke with Jared's first wife back in the day. Okay. This is like fucking 13 years ago or 11 years ago. So we, we go outside to smoke. Jared comes out with us. We look over to the left and Jeff is like on a knee with his arm propped up on the air conditioning unit, <laughs> pretty much blacked out. Yeah. And he was talking to it. I don't know what he was saying. And I don't know if he was talking to the AC unit or what the fuck was going on there, but he was in bad shape. And we were like, oh, there's that guy. Yeah. <laughs> there's that guy. Uh, <laughs> he had been gone out of the house for maybe 15 minutes. So it, it hit that quick and you were gone. I don't, yeah. I Did mean, you throw I, up at all? No, I don't think so. No, he didn't throw up at all. I just remember being, I mean, I, I according to them, had a lengthy conversation with the AC unit. Well, we we and, watched. But I remember being on it, like either sitting on it or laying on it, or I don't, no. I just knew that was You my were on own. a knee <laughs> with one arm propped up on it. I could see the image in my head right now. Well, I was facing out, but uh, I was probably drinking you were water. Trying, you were probably pulling security, yeah. It's probably, <laughs> honestly, like your brain went back to reptile brain. It was like, I got to pull security. Uh, but... He saw us at some point, looked up and started talking to us, and then went back to his conversation with the AC, which is apparently very important. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Uh, but uh, then later on, in the, we get him back inside. Later on in the evening, he's like, I got to piss. And he walks out front and tries to piss through 
the rungs of the fucking uh, the porch, whatever. What's it called around the porch? Not a deck. Yeah, like deck. the yeah. like through the fucking slats yeah, of the yeah, deck, yeah. basically. Any, uh, any instead of doing that, calling and tell he us just, what instead of doing that, he just pisses all over himself. Which you know we all look we we were urinating on ourselves a lot back then. To be fair, I, I look. I think it, how old were you at that point? Let's see. When, when was this? Two thousand eight. I was mid thirties. Yeah, yeah mid thirties. I'm a, I'm a tad thirties. A little old to, to be pissing on yourself. Going to be real about that one. Uh, nah. Probably twenties. Tw- it was the last time I pissed on myself. I think. No, I'm, I'm gonna be forty eight this year, so I'm looking to piss all over myself now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> if, you, if you take down... I mean, it's almost at a point now that <laughs> it's either piss myself in bed or get up in the middle of the night. I'd probably choose the, the, the easier of the two. You got to get that ghost bed and uh, put, get the mattress cover on there. You can nice. piss all you want. Does it, yeah. come in, does it come in black? No, but the mattress <sighs> cover protects the mattress from yeah, getting well, stained. I'm looking for a black cover. It does. Uh, by the way, it's a beautiful segue. Because that's actually our first sponsor, <laughs> ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. <laughs> Uh, they are look. They're they're the mattress for for if you're military or first responder. Those are the guys to go to. Fifteen percent off forever at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Scroll to the bottom of the page. And you'll find a tab there. You can click that on and get fifteen percent off of everything in the store: sheets, pillows, mattresses, the cover, uh, so you don't piss yourself. Uh, and as always at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, they've got a pay as you go program. Thirty six months. No interest. No one on the interwebs is doing that today. Uh, who else we got, D'Anthony? Uh, let's go. Let's go. Box of Awesome. Let's go. Box of Awesome. I love Box of Awesome. Yeah. Com. Um, I haven't actually requested one in a while. I need to go request a new one. With with all of these products, all you have to do is say the name, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Because uh, all of them we love. Box of Awesome is is the raddest. You, you just have to fucking answer like a five question thing. About if you're <coughs> what kind of man you are in this life. Oh. And then they'll send you a box of awesome shit, depending upon what you like hatchets, uh, whiskey decanters, all oh. kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like, it's like dude So if stuff. you're not so much a awesome, you get an awesome box compared to your personality. Yeah, so I exactly. <laughs> so like my first, I, I guess I said I traveled a lot. Uh, my first gift was a uh, box, was a, a travel bag. And Second one kit, was yeah. a uh, dop kit. Um, a my what? A dop kit. Oh, they should dock kit. A dock? Like docking. Oh, like docking for penises. <laughs> penises. Or two space men's. docking. Space, space docking. Do- space I don't know. Yeah, uh, space or docking. two male penises because there's a, there's a kit for that as well. I uh, like it's 2019. Of- you have to say male penis now. Yeah. Excuse me. That's a female penis, Exactly. Sir. You've got to, you to, to specify. Wow. To yeah. say who it is. Otherwise, it could be, oh, is that a trans penis or what kind of penis? That's are you a gender about? neutral penis. Yeah. It's, very, it's a fluid penis. It's a fluid penis is what it is. Uh, wow. Um, so, no, I got that. And then um, uh, the next like the next time I filled it out, I got like this knife that you put on your fist and then roll it over the meat. Oh, yeah. Those things are dope. It's for like shredding meat or whatever. Fucking awesome. Fuck, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so every month you're like, dude, what's the cool shit? Yeah. And it's uh, it's it looks super expensive. And you're like, but it's only like 45 bucks a month. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, go to it's boxofawesome.com. It's all bespoke posts. It's, a, it's like white labeled bespoke post stuff, basically. Yes. So yeah. it's, well, it's course, like sharper well, image or whatever the fuck, but like bespoke posts. It's really legit. Like well, the nicest shit ever. <laughs> like I've my, got a whiskey decanter. I got a fucking cast iron pan with uh, some ingredients to cook uh, fucking pancakes and shit. Yeah. Like I get, I, that's the kind of stuff I get. Yeah, you get like the, the you get the fun like cool shit, uh, yeah. f- f- like food wise. You got the that sh- that jigger too, didn't you? Yeah, um, the, the weight shaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the sidewinder, bro. <laughs> I, I got the shake weight that has the uh, that finishes in your face. Yeah, all yeah. over your face. How did I miss out on that? Well, yeah. well, it's not too late. That thing you kept on your bed for years. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start a company like Box of Awesome, but it's for sex toys. Uh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? But uh, they're rentals. By the way, before we get to that, <laughs> go to boxofawesome.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Get you 20% off that box. Sign up and get a subscription. I've had this thing for a while now. Ever so you're saying them. that we shouldn't have a sex toy rental company? I'm saying you should, um, but I'm saying you should have an 82-day return policy. Yeah, yeah, well, why 82? I heard this earlier, and I was like, why Why you choose that? Two number? and a half months, I think, is enough to try out your sex toys and be like, do I want these for life? Well, that, that that number to us means something, so I'd make it 101. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 101, 101. 101 days because yeah, they're not months. really airborne. They're not really airborne. They're fake, and that's exactly what they should be. That's Just, a third of the year. Well, 101. I mean, it's it's more than 90. 
I heard a fucked up story about you that you you lost a sex toy inside your body. Okay. No, I made that up. Oh, that's not true. No, it's not true, man. Oh shit. Which one dude. did I lose? I don't know. You, I didn't. I don't have your inventory. I sheet thought you were me. dead serious when you said that. That it, that's that just it. because I don't have emotions. Okay, so if I had lost one, then technically it wouldn't be mine. It'd probably be somebody else. Somebody else's. Yeah. Did you yeah. get down on that? You were pegged or anything? Well, you know, you never know. I'm not gonna bring out my. Really? Yeah. You know what? I've always said this, and I'm gonna stay strong because I'm a man. Yeah. You know what? I don't do anything fantasy like that fantasy football or fantasy that. The only thing fantasy happens in my world is in the bedroom. Really? Yeah. What's your jam? You go to like like cheerleader shit? Well, you mean like porn? No, uh, like outfits. Like oh. Your, your, your girlfriend's here right now? Yeah, she's right there. Man, if we have to plug her in, get her on the show that to figure out dangerous. what you're into. That could be you dangerous. You got real nervous real quick on that Yeah, because she's got a mouth on her. Not like as in like good mouth, but like mouthy, mouthy. Like she, she won't hold back. Yeah, what were we talking about? Dress up, cosplay, that type yeah, of shit? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, we do. We like, uh, matter of fact, we, uh, we've we been looking at, well, when we do the whole Oktoberfest thing. Yeah. Like we went for that, but now we're looking for other stuff. Like you mentioned earlier about dressing up, going to the movie, looking like Rambo. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Bingo, right over there. No Star shit. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, uh, happy do you, nerd. It, do you have sex with her, Princess Leia? No, we haven't got that far yet. Because she's got a Chewbacca. Well, there's a new one coming Whoa, out. Did you, fuck her, did you fuck her as Chewbacca? <laughs> no, no, yeah, but she's got a Chewbacca onesie. Is it a onesie or some shit? You should dress up like Han Solo and fuck her as Chewbacca. Oh, that'd be so good, man. That's and, something I definitely would probably film. And you just growl the whole time. <laughs> 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 that's fucking great. I would oh, watch that all day. If you fucked a Chewbacca, that'd be so awesome. I'd be so I'd proud be of proud. you. Yeah, that would be the best thing that ever happened. I'd shoot it a little bit. Because those onesies are for sale, I think, at Walmart. It's that time of year. Yeah, well, ask right her. She's, the, she's the pro on it. And there's a new yeah. uh, Star Wars coming out in December, right? On, so I got on, that. I got that. On, I'm, I got yes. that. Looking Isn't there one coming to out too? on Christmas? Yeah, again? you can uh, cut a hole in it. Just a, just one hole in the Chewbacca thing, and you're good to go. Where, 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 Wookie, we don't know two. how many holes they have. Where would yeah, you put the hole? Two. Where would you put the hole? Front or back? Front or back? Yeah. I mean, we'd have to get with a Wookie authority. Maybe it's like the old the old uh, the flap. The flap. Yeah, yeah. You just pull the flap down. She's bang. saying to cut the whole crotch out. And then she looked like a what? It was those monkeys with the bare ass. Oh, the yeah. baboon. I, I, like like the, baboon. I like the blue ass baboon. That's my yeah. favorite. I know everybody's got their own favorite baboon. Mine's the blue ass one. I don't think that's a big deal. Nah, I don't either. I just like to, blue. My eyes are blue. You, it's normal. Try to explain that to your five or six year old daughter at the zoo. While I don't a have a five ass. or six year old daughter because it's like the creepiest I have, shit ever. What's it called? No morals. That's it. There it is. No morals, and I uh, shouldn't be a father. Pro See, I wish choice. children on somebody like this right here. <laughs> I would be the best dad in the history of dads. Do you think so? No, nah, I think he's. he'd have to rival me. I'm a pretty cool dad. I, yeah. got, I got a good dad brand. Not that I'm into the whole branding thing, but my dad brand's pretty solid. Last year, I, I dressed up as Batman and picked her up at the school. It'd be funny if you dressed up she, as Batman. Was she into that? Oh, my God. Was she Was so she into six that? back That's awesome. then? Yeah. Oh, she's six years we, old. We, yeah, we you're were right. going, she's seven now. We but. were going to her fall festival, which is you know politically correct for a Halloween party. So I is that what they fucking call it now? Yeah, it's God a fall festival. Because I'm I, my child just started kindergarten, right? Yeah. So I'm getting into everything you're doing. Yeah. And that's why I asked if if she thought it was cool because I'm I drop him off for school in the morning. Right. And he almost doesn't want to say goodbye anymore. It depends on who you know is outside the door. And I'm like, are we starting this at five, bro? Where you're too <laughs> fucking cool. Nah, she's she's pretty. Girls are different. Yeah, but even though I mean, so how it all planned out? I was supposed to pick her up for school. We won't go down the long train of abuses, but I had to deal with the, the school system, how to do it. But um, don't get me started on school systems. Oh, baby, we could we could just we could just go hard because you know what? I just came from curriculum night. All right, and two plus two is no longer four. It doesn't equal four, anyways. So. What do they have options for it now? Yeah, there's options. You know, it, two plus two could also be three plus one, but they don't want anything as equal. That's how it was explained to me. And You're I was kidding. Yeah, I was just. Like, What's the purpose of that? I don't know. I mean, technically, if you put an equal sign in the middle and you put, they don't want the equal sign anymore. Well, that's math. I'm sorry. You can't. Yeah, well, I, that's what I said. Math, but yeah. I but mean, if you put an first equal grade sign teacher in the looked middle. at me like, no, 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 Mr. Taylor, it, we want our children to. First, we want them to. Start working the problem themselves. I'm like, all right, it's cool. Oh, and then no. we want them to work collectively as a group and then Oof. to come up with a system. So basically what it turns out is the dumb kid in the corner getting the answers yeah. from the smart kids at the table so everybody's on the same playing field. And that's how I kind of saw it. What's so. offensive about the the word Halloween, though? Is it because of, like, witchcraft or something? Are people afraid that witches are real? Because that's not real. 
Yeah, has that become a thing now? You said they call it the fall the fall festival festival or whatever. Yeah, not they call it Halloween because um, people don't. I don't know. Ask those people. God that damn it! Just I mean, that sounds like something from church. They're like, oh, we're having yeah, a yeah, fall just, party. Yeah, like, we're having a fall festival. Dude, we didn't want to just anybody. relax. It's for kids. Fuck face. That's so great. anyway, yeah. Like we don't. I don't believe in fucking Christianity. Doesn't mean I'm not going to celebrate Christmas with my kids if I have kids. No, yeah. no, I'm Get the same fucked, way. I, I celebrate Christmas. I, don't, I mean, I do. I believe that uh, the guy was born. Yeah, but I mean, well, you talking about Saint Nick, yeah. Ger- German guy. Yeah, yeah. Into. The poo porn. A lot of people don't know that about St. Nicholas. Oh, uh, Santa. Because, I mean, it's yeah. healthy for any child to visualize a big fat man coming down your chimney, breaking into your house, and leaving presents for you. Yeah. I mean, I that's okay. One of fine. the things that we wanted to do a Black Rifle, and we just thought it would be too much considering all the gun stuff that's been going on the last four or five years, but we wanted to do a sketch where uh, Santa's coming down the chimney and he just gets lit the fuck up by somebody. We were like, no, we can't murder Santa. Yeah, I like gotta, somebody's I gotta kids are gonna that. see that and they're gonna complain and blah blah blah. But look, Santa comes into my house. We're yeah. gonna ha- we're gonna have a little tea party. <laughs> all right. <laughs> are you tea bagging or are you just blowing him away? I'm just gonna shoot him in both of his knees and ask him what the fuck he's doing in my house. You have to collect the tell. You can't just kill people right off. You have to see. Yeah, you gotta. What, you, you just can't smoke a dude. You gotta tell him like, hey, you know, hey, get out of my house. You know, um, what are you doing in here? Yeah. Because he could be looking at you like, oh, shit, man, I just came in for a cup of tea or a, a cup of sugar. Sure, sure. No, that kicked your window in or your door, but, hey, you got any sugar, and you smoke him, and you don't kill him. I wonder if going through the chimney is even breaking and entering, because technically, for it to be burglary, there has to be, uh, like, you have to break something, some kind of device <laughs> meant to keep you out. when he falls down into the t- I know, <laughs> right? But you have, to, you have to cross some <laughs> barrier that was put there specifically to keep you out. That's the textbook definition of burglary so okay you see ever see the top of a chimney that hole's not really big first of all i don't know how to fact this guy is a real down. conversation it's magic we're, we're, bitch yeah, no, really magic. this is all magic <laughs> it was all magic so you show up uh as, as batman yeah at so i'm a batman so i I'd let the school know because it was a fall festival and i bought her a little uh uh harley quinn outfit because that's what she was into at the time and uh <laughs> not the Provocative Harley Quinn, super slutty uh, one, yeah, yeah, the the DC superhero high girl thing, the Lego world. And what if we were to hire a bum to play the Joker? And you show up as Batman at the school, the elementary school, and just beat the fucking balls. Okay, off so this we're guy. gonna get to that point. What I had to do when I sent the email. Um, they said that I wanted to come pick her up, and I let them know that I was coming as Batman, so that way, I was like, so you don't shoot me. Mm-hmm. So but then they were like, they were a little upset about that. But so I show up and I got her a little car and I walk up there and, and, and she was standing out front that day because she was going to be a car rider because they got, you know, car rider or ride the bus or be picked up after school at the, uh, the daycare thing. And so I was standing there and she didn't recognize me until she saw Batman standing there. And then she saw her sign that said her name on it. And then she come running over the biggest smile in the world. And even the principal was like, she said, Mr. Tri, I've never ever had batman come on campus to pick up a child before she's like that was so super awesome oh that's rad so then i went to the fall festivals batman i'm torn around talking to the kids yeah i mean come on that was i wish my dad had dressed up as batman how legit was your outfit i wasn't a great one but it was batman it was black pajamas (laughs) (laughs) he just drew the word batman on the shirt (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it, it would be a low-level cosplay. I mean, yeah, not a good one, but, I mean, it, it's a starter. Is it cos? I've been saying cosplay for I don't know. I don't either. It is cosplay. Ah, uh, the girlfriend's correcting you. Well, I know. She would know. I she's do, the one I, that dresses up to go to movies. She's yeah. the one that she's, dresses she knows up. She's a perfect. Yeah. Yep. We're not going to go any further off camera, what but if you, what I if can you, tell uh, by the look in your eyes you get crazy. What? what if you dressed up like Batman and went to that fall festival and just started telling all the kids that Santa Claus is not real? Ugh. That's something classic Dan would do. I would do yeah, that. Yeah, you're exactly right. Those are the shit that he has thought of and saying we'd be around drinking. It's and, far better. And be like, you know what? Let's just stop and go to all these kids. Man, like, dude, what is wrong with you? Uh, I mean, is, you got to draw the line of being. Here's the line. He has no line. It's far better yeah, to. Yeah, he does because he would never, he would never would, in his life do that. No, I wouldn't do that. But it's far better to uh, accept the world as it is than persist in delusion, no matter how gratifying it is. That's Carl Sagan. Yeah, so. it is. Uh, you, you, but did Carl what? Sagan ever go to a school board meeting? I took I took Dan to a school board meeting the other nice. night. Nice. Yeah. How would he do? He was fine. Um, but you know, you that, can see him a little, little antsy in his chair, ready to. That whole uh, that that whole experience is <laughs> you know 
uh, hilarious when you see how the system works and all that other shit. And it, it's, like, it's, it's hard. But I, you know what really upset me about the whole thing is how the teachers during our curric- – it was called a curriculum night mm-hmm. where they were talking about the curriculum where our children would be going through as if it's Harvard. <clears throat> they try to make you feel dumb. Well, I, so there's two there's two things to that. So I'm fortunate enough my kids go to a school where the teachers are fantastic. Like it was a, a rare sitch where the kindergarten teacher actually came over to our house. Really? Before the school started, introduced herself and dropped off a book about what kindergarten was going to be like and all that stuff. So the teachers are fantastic. Um, the school board itself has got their own fucking bullshit going on. So, uh, Well, the one guy we talked to last time. Is he seems like an alright guy? Well, the thing is, the teachers in themselves that uh, even even the principal at, at my daughter's school is a superwoman. Uh, she's probably mid thirties woman. I mean, just dedicated to her cause. I mean, she cares. you have she to does, be because yeah, you don't get paid is. shit to do this. Yeah. Once, once you leave the classroom and you get outside of school to those school boards, the elected positions, and those people that haven't been in the classrooms in twenty or thirty years are so out of touch with how students are. That you're right. That's where the problem starts with our education system. Yeah. Because uh, look, then you start getting into busing and travel and yeah. all that other shit, and uh, none of it's lined up right. I don't even know why we opinions. waste money on school buses anymore because everybody drops their damn kids off. I believe in the school bus. I believe I do in too. public schools. I believe in school buses and all that shit. Because I, look, I went through it. There's certain experiences you learn on a school bus that kind of help you later on in life. You don't want to. There's certain look, words you can say on a school bus yes. that you can't say at home and your mother at that age. 100%. I can just, yeah, exactly. You also learn how to communicate as a human being. Like yep. all these incels, these Antifa dickholes, uh-huh. they probably went to private school and didn't learn how to communicate with other human beings in a meaningful way. Yes. Because and that I, uh, I honestly fucking believe that is the case. Yeah. These motherfuckers, uh, they just can't relate to other people like, if if someone disagrees with you on a school bus, you're like, oh, I don't think that. Like, oh, well, we can either yell at each other or fight, or we can go sort back to out. We, or you, we can go back to doing just... whatever the fuck we were doing. Now you can't do any of that. You can't play dodgeball for fuck's sake. Like you can't do it. all the conflict resolution that you used to learn as a child through uh, through whatever it was, mm-hmm. right? The social interaction in general, or like low level violence, like slapping each other around or yelling at each other. It's gone now. And what's happened throughout those years? Now people immediately pick up a gun, walk into a movie theater, and start shooting the place up. Like, if you don't teach people how to resolve conflicts in a peaceful and, and well, somewhat peaceful and meaningful way, the long-lasting way, then stuff builds and builds and builds. Yeah. That person doesn't feel like they have any other option other than to go make their voice heard the way that fucking Pearl Jam talked about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeremy so, Spoken. Yeah. So it's like, come on, man. Let's, let's fucking... Pay a little bit of attention to the way life works, motherfucker. Because yeah, I think back in the day, growing up in my era, that if you were that kid that was uh, got picked on a lot, you had two options: either take it, because they were always the super smart kids. They ended up at some big Ivy League school and they came back twenty year reunion like a multi billionaire computer software. I'm like, yeah, you used to pick on me, and now I, I can buy. Now you. I own you. Yeah. yeah now yeah. you work for me. Yeah. I mean, it was the whole uh, Marty McFly. Biff scene going on there, which there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. Right? No, no, no. It, otherwise, there is. how do you have that motivation to go and do that type of shit? There's the other school where the worst beating I took in my life was on on a bus. I fucking this kid was talking shit. I thought I could take him. We were sitting down. Um, told him to get off at my stop. He fucking knew jujitsu. I mean, I got <laughs> housed, and it was I didn't even see it. I get, I think I got kicked in the throat, <laughs> face, chest, and both arms, and like. Less than four seconds, I was on the ground. <laughs> I get the shit kicked out of me, and I was like, oh, yeah. man, there is only so much shit you can talk on a bus. But then also, if I wanted to continue to talk shit, I better learn to fight really great. And exactly. that's, that's what I did. But I mean, we don't condone or condemn the, the violence, but at the same time. Not at all, but I, I would say this. It was in a safe way where, fuck, all the other kids got off on the bus. You yeah. know, you're getting the shit kicked out of you. Somebody pulls them off, yeah. and then that's it's, it. And you start it's, a, I mean, we, it's the same thing with uh, preacher's daughters. They get told that sex is bad their whole life, and as soon as they get fucking any semblance of freedom, they fuck everything that moves. Yeah. And if you tell these kids why that low-level violence— Why are you talking about my, my <laughs> life like this? Yeah. <laughs> you, you start telling these kids that low-level violence as a means of conflict resolution is that's the worst— that's bullying. That's the worst thing that could ever happen. No, the worst thing that could ever happen is that that kid never deals with these issues and he comes back at 16 to 21 and shoots a bunch of people for no fucking reason. Yeah, like you were mentioning earlier, the basement people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incels. Uh, and that's... Involuntary celibate. Yeah, and that's... Uh, 
look, the, the craziest kid I ever met in my life was a preacher's <laughs> kid. Same thing. Um, that k- guy lost his mind and he's fucking dead now. Um, I mean, he it pushed happens it a lot. Every, I know. And it was like, you know, you're one of those people where I, cause I grew up in Georgia and you're like, mm-hmm. come on, man. Everybody loves the preacher. Their kids got to be great, too. And I was everybody like, loved you know. the preacher's daughter. too. Any, yeah. Anybody that grew up in the South knows that preacher's kids are the worst people. Yeah, we were just talking about this yeah. the other night. Oh, were you really? Yeah, we actually, I think we were, we're not where we were coming back from. And uh, we were talking about, uh, I don't know what we got on that tangent, but we were talking about the worst kids in school were the cops' kids. Because uh-huh. oh, yeah. they're always in trouble, but they get out of it. Yeah. The preacher's daughter, the preacher's kids, because they never got held to any type of, they got held, their standard was different because they didn't want that coming out in church on Sunday. So they got away with everything. Because, I don't know, it was something with the thing that I'm that type of guy that if it can happen to, I mean, I, go, I get a, I buy a new truck and I'm not out of the parking lot within 10 miles and a rock comes up and chips my window. So I got to get a new window replaced. So they pay to get it replaced, and I'm leaving the place to replace my window. I'm not 10, 15 miles down the road. Guess what happens? Another rock. Another yeah, chip. yeah, exactly. That happens to me. Like, I never get over on anything. I never got over anything in the Army either. <laughs> but uh, these people just get away with it, like, I continuously. I know. I, I get a, a kid that I went to school with ended up being a preacher, becoming a preacher. And he follows. He used to, un, he used to follow and unfollow me every two months on Facebook for, like, two years. Finally, I just said, and I get a, I get a message from him because I didn't click the friend request anymore. Yeah. And he goes, I don't understand, man. Why don't you click the thing? And I was like, whatever you're going through, you know, preacher wise and all that shit is, is rad. And I appreciate that you're doing it. And this is what you wanted to do in life. However, I can't un- he was just I looking, accept your he was, shit every he, time. And he goes, Ross, man, it's you're so funny, but it's so crass, dude, that I can't let people know that I'm friends with you. And I was like, awesome. So we're done with that. And if you have any other messages, you'd like to send me. You yeah, but see, what he, I think me. what he was truly doing was he'd friend you. He'd spend a couple months writing sermons about everything you shouldn't do. And then he'd duck off on you. And then he was like, I need some shit to write about. Yeah. Yeah. You're his muse, man. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Could you're, be. His, you're his little angel. Uh, yeah, I'd say his name. But I've, wanna, I've got something similar going on right now. With what? With a person on the Internet. On really? Facebook, exactly. So you know how Facebook is very good at finding pictures of you and saying, hey, is this your picture? Do you want to tag yourself? Yeah. And uh, there's a meme of me, Jared, and this woman he used to date. You, she's kind of famous. Uh, let you guys look for her. Okay. Uh, Canadian chick. Anyways, uh, so this guy keeps posting. or he's, He posted this meme, I think it was in April of this year mm-hmm. and it pops up all the time and I keep tagging myself in it and he untags me. I tag myself in it probably three or four times a week. No, I go way. back and I keep, I'm going to, I'm never going to stop. So if you're out there and you know me or you've, you found this, I'm never fucking stopping. <laughs> you may, you can either delete that picture because it's my fucking picture or you can just accept the fact that I'm tagging myself in it. Either way, get fucked. That's really fucking I'll funny. never, you know me, I'll never fucking stop. I have nothing better to do. We work like 20 hours a week. I'll, I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, fucking, it's, I'll go home today day and just monitor his page and wait for it to happen I yeah have nothing to do yeah <laughs> you so, don't i i have fuck you have children i have children and then, and then another play, show and then another yeah. fucking book too and all that shit. yeah uh, i wish there was more goddamn time in the day no, um you'll get there well, yeah and then, well, I, I hope not right dude I, at my age now having a daughter at six going to be seven dude, it's this most awesome thing in the world how many I, hours a week do you work um, it depends. Um, where I'm at right now, I'm supposed to be part time. So at first they started me a little bit harder, and I was like, yeah, about anyway, twenty twenty five hours a week. And then when I do the, they project, don't want you to go t- thirty because they'll have to give you health insurance. If you do I don't that. need health insurance. I know you don't need it, but they're legally required. Th- thank to give you, it to America. You. Yeah. Um, but um, nah, I think it's like what they consider full time is like thirty five hours. It's 30. thirty. Yeah, and thirty hours or whatever. The Affordable Care Act is thirty. Um, but we don't have that anymore. See, I always, I always wonder this. Well, it's not a law that you have to have it. Well, it, is, it depends on the size of the company and the size of your company. They definitely have to have my it. My company's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, yeah they, they definitely have to have it. Because um, my question is this. Like, I, I work a lot. We travel a lot also for what we do. Yeah, I say I only worked 20 hours a week. But when, when it's travel week, we work like 90 hours a week. So it balances out throughout the oh, year. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't have children either. Like, no. This and I get, I get out f- another fucking show, obviously. But some... Um, uh, with that, I wish there's a moment where you're like, man, I wish there was a dollar amount that you could just check off and be like, all right, cool, man. I'm just going to watch my kids grow up. Is that where you're at now where you're like, man, I get to spend more time with my children? Yeah. Um, is there a dollar amount? Everything I do now, mm-hmm. I, like work-wise, is is for her future. Um, 
I got to have, that's the reason why I've worked like two or three people. Like, dude, you're retired. Like, I guess so many of our guys I retire with are retired in the past year. Like, dude, you're retired. Why are you working? I'm like, because I still got a seven year old. Right. And I just don't, there's only, <laughs> there's only so much drinking you can do in a day. Like, I, I'll work for a couple days and I'll be at the house for a couple days. I like two or three days. I'm like, I got to get involved in something. You sure. Because, I mean, yeah, just, you don't want to rot at home. Exactly. And we've seen, I've had too many of my, my, yeah. my Army mm-hmm. veteran buddies that are retired that we've had to bail out in the past two or three years that never progressed past that phase of, okay, I'm in the Army. I'm retiring. What's life look like after? Which I chose a path long before that because I actually, I never thought I would retire. I didn't think I'd make it to there. I mean, I thought I'd get kicked out long before that, especially being friends with these idiots. Yeah, yeah. But um, I did. And uh, then I had to start looking about five years before I made that decision to make that retirement decision that what was life going to look like after the Army. Um, We call that, you know, coming full circle. Um, I have so many of my friends that um, are friends of friends that guys just never come full circle. They think when the moment they walk out of the military that some Fortune 500 company is going to offer them a hundred fifty thousand a year job. Well, brother, that ain't going to happen. Right. You know, you're going to have to get your ass back in there. You know, maybe started a. I mean, I took part time jobs. I mean, I worked at worked at a golf course picking up golf balls for like eight bucks an hour just because it was something to do. Sure. Just to get around and be able to recommunicate with. Yeah, people. Yeah, but that again. was at Pinehurst, right? Yeah. Which is a pretty nice uh, golf course. It's a pretty prestigious You were doing course. it just so you could play on the course. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, okay, we got, a, we got a pretty good benefit to play out there. All right, so <laughs> shh, don't tell anybody. And everybody run out there for an $8 an hour job. I mean, those guys at Piners, I work with great guys, great golf courses, and that's probably one of the it's, – it is. It's the golf mecca of America, man. It's, it's great courses. It is, yeah. yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, is the money good enough when you retire to take care of yourself? Like, are you working just to work? Or are you working because you need the extra money? Um, depends on what you did prior to that. Yeah, because I don't, I don't know that world, so I don't know. I mean, what honestly, it's like. if I if I would have none re- of my friends retired, right? But so. if, if if I would have retired and said, hey, and not done anything prior to that, <clears throat> I gotta watch what I say. I got a few ex wives out there. Um, oh, I know. Trust me. So my uncle. My uncle retired. And, and by the way, we're divorced and it's final. Can't take me back to court on any of that. No, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> you should have asked for it when you had the opportunity. Um, well, for <clears throat> military pensions, you had to be together for 10 years. Well, plus. no, that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, I thought that, too, because the state of North Carolina, God bless it, can, they, they can award and they will award a percentage of the time that you were married. So DFAS, really? the Department of Defense and Accounting Services, <clears throat> says you have to be 10 years before they get involved, in which they were trying to pass a law right about the time of my last divorce to say, okay, we don't care if it's one year or 10 years. But and they never went through. So the North Carolina can say, which I don't understand how a state can supersede federal government and when it happens – North Carolina can say, okay, you're married for five years, and they're going to take your retirement and give her a very a, a portion of that five years. So it turns out to be like 1.5% or 0.15% or something like that, what they'll receive. So North Carolina can't. Um, some states don't even deal with that, but the fact that we have so many military installations here with the Marine Corps, uh, the Army, the Air Force, everything, and we're a big military uh, state, mm-hmm. you know, they get involved in that nonsense and that rhetoric. So... And, you know, I, like I, I've said to once, I've said a thousand times to my buddies going through divorces, you know, don't be that guy. You know, pay your whatever they tell you. But you want the child to have the same type of uh, lifestyle with the mother or when they're with you. Sure. You know, most guys go through that divorce and they're like, oh, I'm free now. I'm going to go party and do that crazy nonsense. And I'm on the opposite side of that fence saying they do the right thing, both uh, morally and financially. Yeah, we were on a cruise a couple of weeks ago and we were trying to get off the last day and two assholes had boarded the cruise and they both had warrants for not paying child support. Yeah. By the way, they weren't drinking bros. No, no they weren't our no. people. They no. were they were uh, <laughs> just some other just two assholes. They were yeah. dead be dads. Two yeah. local dicks, yeah. 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 Two local dicks to, to Texas, but uh, yeah, non drinking bros. Yeah. They held up the fucking cruise for that. Um it was crazy. I think uh, I wrote their names down. No, so somewhere. back to Ross what you were saying that um if I would have just retired, like, okay, I'm here one day, I'm gone to next, and here comes my pension, no, nah, I would have had to continue to work. If I wouldn't have taken the proper steps with the TSP or, you know, investing earlier in my career and saving a little bit of that money, 
then no, I would have had to continue to work probably a full time job. So now at being semi semi retired, I can make the choice of what I do or what I don't do. And that income really is for the future of my daughter or what I consider my play or excuse me, my play money, my fun money. Okay. What I want to do and go play golf or buy a retirement present or, you know, whatever I want. But you need most people need some some sense of income. I mean Gotcha. I didn't know if it was great enough that, you know, some people are. It all depends on what rank you get out at. I mean, some of these guys get a pretty hefty retirement. It's not a pension. It's retirement. Is that more or less incentive to keep going and, you know, move you, you up the ranks certain the markers. Market? So at 20 years, then 25, then 30, then 35. Right. Now, we, now, that, now that we've come to a, and I hate to call it this because we've still got brethren downrange, especially in Afghanistan, they're still fighting every day, um, that... The service limitations now have come back where you have to reach a certain rank in a certain period of time or the Army tells you or the Marine Corps or Air Force or whomever tells you, hey, thanks for coming, but you didn't, you reached your enlistment potential and if you don't make a rank by a certain time of service, then you got to go. And, so, and you lasted 25 years? I lasted 25 years to go figure. And if I did it, anybody can. Was there any thought of going 30, 35 years? I could have stayed... Um, Three more, three, two, three or four more years on my service limitations, and I decided that, that when I got there, I was done. Because I, you couldn't reach thirty. Well, not that I didn't want to even try. I'd gotcha. had enough of it. I'd got to the end of it. Guys like this, the guys I'd served with, the guys I'd fought in the wars <laughs> with, the, all the guys that uh, were that brethren. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them were moved on. Uh, they either had gotten out, went like Dan went back to college, or you know, guys like Jared went somewhere. He, Jared got out and he kind of came back in and worked. Was it, Air Force Reserve, Air Guard. Air Guard, yeah. Air Guard. Um, a lot of guys <clears> had said to hell with it. I mean, they, we got beat up for years. I mean, um, I mean, I can go down this long train of, of, you know, what combat looked like in the First World War and then the Second World War and then the Korean War and Vietnam and how much time these guys actually saw what we referred to as combat. Um, you know, we lived in the middle of just north of Sauter City. Yeah. Um, in World War II, the average soldier saw something like, like 40 ish no, days of combat a yeah, year. Yeah, it's like I think. 10, anywhere 10 to 14 days of actual combat. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're not saying like seeing the enemy every day, um, just being in a combat in, environment. Yeah. Um, Vietnam, it was somewhere around 20 days. You know, my father's a Vietnam veteran himself, uh, where they actually were out there every day, either on patrol or doing something in a combat. Uh, scenario where that elevation of that risk and, and, and stress is much higher. Yeah. We mm-hmm. lived north of Slaughter City for 15 months. But I mean, yeah, it was about 800,000 meters away, give or take, something well, like that. Uh, it was from the border. We, yeah, but we were just, we're the first northern part of that. I mean, within a five or 10 minute drive, we were in the northern part of Slaughter right. City. And um, every day we were rocketed, we were mortared. Like we do two. Two, three patrols. Two, two or three patrols yeah. a day, then we go out at night and kick doors down all night Got for it. 15 we, fucking months. 15 and months. At some point in that period, you get a week off to go do other shit. Every now and again, you'll go back to the main base for two days. Refit. For a refit. And get harassed by, but it's different. by pogues. It's definitely different, yeah. People are like, oh, go get your hands <laughs> out of your pockets. They're like, dude, I just murdered 70 people. Right. Good. My hands are cool. I'm, I'm My good hands. with that fucking. Oh, no, hands would, I mean, he's, he's not. I mean, the number's a little high, but I mean, we would go in. We knew we'd have a refit coming out of out of Cop Can, Callahan, or Callahan, Callahan yeah. yeah, and uh, Dodie, if you're listening, hi, yep. uh, Keith's uh, wife, uh, his widow. Um, that we would go in at night. So when we were heading down into a mission in Sauter City, we would just pack our bags. Like, we knew we'd no f- sooner finish up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, hit the highway, and then we'd be back at the uh, main camp. What he's saying is when we left, re- so we'd lo- leave the main camp to go back to our cop, our combat outpost. Right, we would mm-hmm. leave a, a combat outpost. We'd go yeah. on the mission, probably get in a good scuffle down there, you know, just some boys having at it. And then we'd finish up there, and then we would just drive all the way back to our big camp yeah. where everybody was at. And then we'd be on like a 72 hour refit. So the first thing you want to do when your young soldiers go in there, you know, we, we've been eating shrimp scampi for what? We're <sighs> three meals a day yeah. for the like like disgusting <laughs> fucking mermites, <laughs> they call it. Horrible. We like, I mean, we ate the same thing for months on end. And, you know, they go to this big chow hall where, I mean, they got ice cream, they got coffee. You know, I'm not going to deprive a young soldier from going in there and getting his eat on. You know, yeah. he's been eating shit for, yeah. you know, three or four months. So, some of these guys have been away from their 
from high school for six, eight months yeah. at this point. Ugh, yeah. Right. God. And th- this is the worst conditions a human being can be yeah, in. Yeah, without a doubt. And, it, uh, and when you get back to the main camp, you show up with a dirty uniform on. They kick the like the civilian. Yeah, we had there some. I had some, I had a couple uh, <clears throat> Air dude. Force Air Force uh, officers. I'm not going to say gender, but Air Force officers uh, made comment one night when you went in there, and like uh, you stink. You guys, yeah. Stink. They come up and they're like, like yeah, you, you guys war, smell. Bitch. Yeah, like yeah. well, we were just in a scuffle down in Sauter City. We come back for seven hours, and I'm not going to tell my boys they can't leave. Uh, they're going to eat their fill, and they're going to because the channel is not open 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's open for specific times during the day. I, if I get back as an NCO, my guys are dirty, but the chow hall is open for another half hour. They're going to eat. If somebody's got to say something about it, they're going to get their fucking shit pushed in, to be honest. Gotcha. Like, you can get fucked with that bullshit. So let me ask you about Solder City, because I, I use a quote from uh, uh, Jocko. Um, was it that bad in there? It depends, use, man. Use, they were, there's book. four million people there, yeah, and there were depends. like about 500 of us. Yeah. Is it was it really as fucking dangerous? Dude, as, as soon as we like, cross the border in Solder City, we start taking small arms fire, mm. and then we start taking indirect after that. Yeah, we Every would single see time as we, were as we be, as we were go down on mission, as we'd start heading down into Solder City, our routes, we could see them start with their. Um, you see people. Oh, wait a minute now. Hold, on the hold up. You know, I'm, I'm telling lies shit. here because according to our command, that that this was not happening. <laughs> um, that we could see them signaling all the way down. Yeah, so you so see people on the corners of streets with cell phones calling, yeah. and then you see people marshalling down the street. Yeah. Like, luckily, uh, at some point uh, in the beginning of the war, they start, they they classified a cell phone as a crew serve weapon, which means you could shoot that motherfucker. If I'm going in for an operation, I see somebody with a phone. Unfortunately for us, our command were a bunch of fucking pussies, and they're like, "Oh, you can't do that." We'll end up on the news. Like, all right. Yeah, I'll end up alive on the news. Right. Sounds, <laughs> sounds great, brother. Well, the old cliche is, "I'd rather be tried by six than carried by or tra- tried by twelve than yeah. carried by six. So, ah, shit. Yeah, um, it, we it was it was a different era, I, and you know, not that I'll support um, you know decisions that they made or or the restraints they put on us. You know, they got lives too, um, but some of us grew up in that era. If we're going to go do something, let's do it. We were yeah. at that point of the war where things were really bad. Um, President Bush made the decision to go ahead and do this surge thing, mm. which changed the war. It really did. It did swing it for us, what they've done after that. that. But we went first went in there. It, it, was, it was tough. I mean, it, we took some <clears> – excuse me. We, I mean, we took some good – you know, we lost some good people, uh, really good people. Um, that's one thing that I said that when you know, we got here. I said I hadn't seen Dan in quite a while. And we all experienced something together where we lost a really, really good, good kid. Um, you know, I just happened to be the guy who was in charge of that that day. So um, I feel a lot of guilt about that. Um, but seeing him again after all this time brings it back. But at the same yeah. time, try, try to put some closure on it that, you know, these are things we have to deal with. But back to the Sauter City thing that it depends, man. Some days we'd go down there and they'd be happy to see us. You know, but they were always, always gather, gathering intelligence on us. And then some nights we'd go down there and it would just be a slugfest from the moment we walked in to the moment we walked out of there. Because when we went back in the surge, when we go to surge, it was 07? Late yeah, it was, 06, 07. It was, uh, well, we got called up uh, 27th of December, December 2006. Yeah. yeah, so we actually got We were in country 07. January 3rd. No, yeah, 07. We were the first American troops really to go and force and start our city since like 04. 04, yeah. yeah. Since the last time they tried to take it and they rolled tanks in there and got pushed out. So it was a big thing for us to be able to go down in there and be able to operate with uh, a PSYOPs or a CA guys to try to reestablish it. Uh, um, try to make something out of it because we knew it was a hot, it was a, it was a haven. Yeah, because that was Saddam City before, and it was Saddam International Airport and all that shit. Right. When Todd Al Sadr took it over as soon as fucking Saddam got clipped, he was already a big militia leader there, and he controlled all the Shia, which is the Iranian version of Muslim, basically. So they had the back. He actually was hiding in Iran for some of the time we were there, and then he head down south, I think, because we were looking for that motherfucker too. Um, but it's a, it's a the worst place on earth i think solder city is oh, i honestly. think it's probably one of the top 10 vacation spots i think most <laughs> americans should go go get it and yeah you can get a one bedroom there yeah. right now no well, see without a doubt i mean <laughs> i mean a lot of these people that you know have big opinions especially these folks on the on the on the news they say all right go ahead yeah some pick, pick up a rifle and go have it yeah, exactly have a look at it. Exactly. They, they never will. Um, something i've always been curious about uh since you guys are here together and when's the last time you saw dan 
2010, probably. You, you, we did Haiti, didn't we? We did Haiti. I didn't, didn't go to Haiti. I did. But I was oh, there when you guys place. got back. Another one of those top vacation Haiti. spots. Love it. Everybody loves Haiti. Try to tip it over just like Guam. Uh, <laughs> <damn it. laughs> no, the, the thing I've always been curious about is is when you're over there, right? Uh, and you're, I'm assuming you guys were best friends, you and Jared. And, we you know. spent a lot of time together. Yeah, now. we spent a lot of, lot of, and, and like we weren't even. Say, in, this is, <clears throat> I'm what's, fortunate. What, what I wanted yeah, to ask go was, ahead, yeah. was, what's that like for you when your best friends leave? And you're still there. Does that make it harder every day? Yeah, it does. Um, <clears throat> did Jared leave before us? Yeah, he went down to uh, Herb- Herbert and Florida. Yeah, he did. Um, Are you talking about uh, the war? The war. Yeah, he left. No, he didn't leave. He went to. Uh, with, yeah, but he, lo- he left with Crispy's unit to yeah. the one. Our, First, first idea. Or whatever when a guy rolled, right, when guys rotate in and out, and you lose guys. Uh, not saying like die, but when the guys leave or, or you know, they roll over to a different company or they you know, they got to go back stateside to go to schooling or the children are being born or whatever. We try to, yeah. you know, you do you miss that. You have that sense of uh, uh, Jared had such a connection stateside that would send him stuff. I mean, it wasn't like we got a box with a couple candy bars. Jared was having boxes of like Snickers sent. I mean, so, you know, you come back or him sitting there with his guitar playing it or creating hate and discontent like he usually does just being him and you come in and he's not there. I mean, we use that as release. I mean, we all have yeah. release. I remember one night we all set up one night playing that stupid video game where we were singing just like children just because we, we wanted a, uh, a release and you use those things. So when that thing's not there, I mean, you got to either find it and um, you just, you, you got to find an outlet. And believe it or not, right. that, Though we're still surrounded, you got to have an outlet. I mean, if it's it's music or I don't know, we probably watch Super Troopers. I don't know a thousand times because yeah. we all laugh at the same scenes. I mean, that was our movie on deployment that we just watched over, over and, and over. over. And even but when I watch it today, I still think of those guys that were in my truck, like Wade Vista or, or Thurston, or the guys that we rolled with, just talking to, and just saying those lines over and over and over again. It's funny that you bring up Super Troopers. That, that was everybody asks like who our favorite guest was of, of all time. Steve Lemmy, yeah, he's up there. Well, Jared, uh, the reason I bring that <laughs> up, Jared was uh, that's the happiest I've ever seen him was when Steve Lemmy walked in yeah. uh, from Super Troopers and did the show. And uh, dude, he knew every line. Every that was our movie. That was that was Cop Callahan. Movie. That was that was Bravo Company's movie, and Jared was worked right along. He lived right yeah. up there with us in HAC Company. Um, but we, we watched that. I mean, we know that movie so. I mean, that's our movie. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's funny. So, what do you after these guys leave? Are you essentially just starting new friendships over again? How, how does that work exactly? No, <clears throat> excuse me. Seeing him today after all this time is like I would walk down the hall and see him in the blue room, and it just doesn't change, it, right? It doesn't change now. Yeah. Now that that you know, we talk about <clears throat> yeah. That love, it's what it is. I mean, I have brothers. Um, my closest people to my life are the guys I serve with. Um, they're they're my real brothers. They're, those are the guys that were the, that endured the same things. Um, I trusted my life with. They trusted my, their lives with uh, with my with me. Um, I don't know why, but because uh, at the end of the day, there were times that I knew that I would put them in positions that. Um, could have cost them their lives but they never said no they did it out of respect for me because they knew that i would be there right behind them um i mean I think well was, we've been in a number of gunfights yeah, together we were, i remember that one gunfight running down the street that asshole shot that rpg <laughs> yeah. at us oh jesus that was funny as shit <laughs> we're like oh i did it bounced off it was so hot it that came day like he Wait, skipped, uh, an RPG? Singer House, yeah, yeah, he skipped it he skipped Sing, it. singer house my our first sergeant at the time and i are about 10 feet apart and this fucking RPG comes right down the middle of us. And we both look at each other and, like, look back at it and look at each other. And like, RPG. It's like it all happened in slow motion. <clears throat> it was fucking funny, to be honest. So we saw him at the end of the street, and then we started bounding. Yeah, you and I were on one side, and he yeah. and Walter were on the other side. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, was Disco, fun, Disco was Dan, day. China Welder, our medic. And we caught those dudes. Oh, no, it wasn't that day we caught them. The dudes in the BMW. We no, caught, that was when. They uh, were on their first ever. This was their, their trial. For, yeah. Uh, some, they were a hit team. Hit team. A four-man hit team. Yeah, did some ethnic so cleansing. Funny. Yeah, and so well, it was, a, it was a 
effectively like a mob style real estate scam. So Mctado saw they always drive down. the worst banged up BMW. Yeah, they look like shit. Um, <laughs> so they Over would there? they would go. <laughs> it was a predominantly Shia area right there. So they would the Shia clerics would say to Sunni people, "You can either leave." and give us your house or we're going to kill you, right? So they would send these four-man squads out to intimidate and threaten them and all this other bullshit. Well, the Golden Mosque in Samara got blown up, so there was a nationwide curfew in effect. And we're out patrolling one day, and it was Dan Riffle, if I remember correctly, oh, I shot think, that yeah. dude through the car. Like, so this, we saw this one car driving, and we're like, nope, that's four military-aged dudes in a car together in during a, black, a fucking... busted-ass yeah, BMW. During a fucking na- nationwide curfew. No, no fucking way, It was bro. definitely a bolo. So Be on the lookout. We, st- <laughs> we start chasing them, and they're, they're accelerating. So uh, one of them pulls a weapon out. The guy sees the... One of our front gunners sees a weapon through the window, and this fucking lights the dude up, shoots him through the arm. Now, um, in, in the, to interject here, sorry, Dan, but uh, now we're in these Humvees. They're all up armored. Yep. These things are not fast. They're slow as shit. Yeah, they're slow as shit. An old woman, 90 years old, rascal, goes faster than these things. So you figure these dudes, in a, but even though it's a busted-ass 5 Series, they can get after it. So yeah. the only weird way for us to get them to stop is, hey, stop. Hey, stop. We're going to shoot, and then just light them up. And yep. that's what Riff did, and he, he lit them up and busted them boys up a little bit. So we're pulled over. For way too long, because we're in a T intersection, and that's a bad place to be. Is this where China be. was? China don't, was no, 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 <laughs> no, that's a war crime, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but something f- way funnier than that happened. Uh, so we're me, him, I think McQuoken and, and Welter are walking around looking for any more assholes that are around. Because these guys, the car stopped after uh, Riffle shot him, and three, <laughs> of the, three of the dudes bolted. Let's be honest about this whole thing. There was a bread store in the next block we were thinking about getting some flatbread from. Oh, yeah, Samoon. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good, and that's how it's, we had spotted it, so we were just trying to wait to, for the head shed to finish up their bullshit yeah. so we could run over here real fast and buy some of this bread that was illegal to yeah. buy off the market, but so it's really good. We thought these guys were all gone. They had all bolted or whatever, and we're walking around inspecting shit, and he walks over next to the car, and he, like, Bends over and leans under. He goes, oh, there's one of these assholes right here. The guy was hiding under a fucking car like 10 feet away from us. Like, you wow. fucking kidding me, you stupid bitch? <laughs> you didn't think we were going to see you? So we drag his ass out of there. He tells us where all his friends live. It was a good day, all in all. Until, did, you the, did you get the flatbread? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We okay. ate it with Happy Cow Cheese, yeah. yeah. Oh, Fuck Happy yeah. Cow Cheese, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, again, little 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 tidbits little of life. Luxuries, and, yeah, yeah, little luxuries. I mean, some yeah. flatbread, some Happy Cow. But anyways, yeah. we're standing there. We're posted up, pulling security and whatever, and one of our, our gunner nearest to the T of the T intersection up there wasn't paying attention, I guess. Some some guy comes around the corner with an RPG fires. It goes right down the middle of our shit. And I'm on one side of the street with uh, with my first sergeant, my medic, and I turn down the street. This car is pulling down, and I just fucking shot into the window a couple times. I don't know what happened there. But he was there at the wrong time, so whatever. Uh, then I cross the street. Me and him are bounding down one side, and, and the first sergeant and uh, medic are bounding down the other side, back and forth. And this poor dump truck comes around the corner. And I'm like, I don't know that this guy's up to no good, but usually dump trucks don't go down fucking... A street about like the size a, of this. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, nope. And we're that's not getting, what they, we're that's not getting what, blown up yeah, by exactly. 6,000 pounds That's what they like shit. to use as big yeah. V-beds. They fill so them we up with fucking lit. We, we fired so many rounds at that thing. I think I went black on ammo. Like, we just like, bah, 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 just like went off on this dude. And uh, Is the guy still alive today? Definitely not. <laughs> but <laughs> the weirdest they, thing in my life. down here to find out. This is the weirdest thing that I ever saw in, in any combat scenario ever. There was, a, there was a lull. It was all over. And this old lady, remember that old lady walks out and she starts walked picking right, stuff up off the ground? Right, I mean, I'm like, what the fuck She are you started doing? walking across the street while we were still gunfighting. I mean, bullets are going. It's been these two idiots, these assholes who were, were shot the RPG. They had a couple AKs. And she literally, with like groceries in her hand, looked left, looked right, and started diddy popping across the street. And the look on her face and just didn't bother it was like she make uh, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's fine. Yeah. I'm sure she's wow. probably still alive. Because yeah. people like that don't die. No. I mean, it didn't bother either. She was deaf and didn't know. But I mean, she. Could, I mean, you could see the shit pinging up all over the place. She just. Just another it. day at the job for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> another day in the shop, baby. Yep. <laughs> so let me ask you this to close out the show. If you guys could go back. And do it, would you? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> for funny, two man. reasons. I, I, One, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> War is like the ultimate. There's nothing. There's no drug out there. There's no sex out there yeah, that's, said, that even I, comes I, close to the this. Ca- the caveat he said, and I said, since one of these days I'll probably I'll try to if I have the right people because I, I don't write real well. But I needed, I wanted to sit down and write a book. I want to interview a lot of my brethren all the way from the super, super secret squirrel SF special operations guys all the way down to the lowest National Guard idiot like my baby brother. But... And even my dad, you know, in Vietnam or, or some of those old World War II crusty dudes are still around that, you know, I got a theory in my mind of why, why we search for that for the rest of our lives. Um, it's the most intense a gunfight when you're getting shot at and you're shooting back and you can see the assholes that are trying to kill you and they know you're trying to kill them. Um, it is the most erotic, intense thing you will ever experience in your life and I think when you go back in life and you look at everything else that you do from you know watching your children be born or you know your kids graduate from college or whatever you 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 look for this this drug and that's why guys make two three four five deployments is because they come home and you know get the wife barking kids yelling and screaming and like fuck that I didn't have I didn't have nothing to care about while I'm over there just trying to stay alive yeah. and that's not even up to me I mean, I'm just here. I'm going to go do my job. You know, if, if it finds me today, it finds me. Because you don't care about nothing over there. All you care about is the guys over here. Yep. I'm more concerned about him and losing him than I am about my own life. You know, um, you know, the people say, talk about all the time that valor, you know, people talk about this valor that people do. You know, and common valor is a common virtue that, you know, guys put their lives out there and give their lives to their buddies because, you know, you say to yourself that it'd rather be me then my guys, I'm going to take care of them. I'm sure in his heart he would have done the same thing or Jerry would have said the same thing, that I'd rather die to protect, make sure that he goes home. It's just that camaraderie. And you're never going to find that anywhere again. I mean, I know you've wrote the book for Matt or, or whatever, and I think you hanging around a bunch of us knuckleheads, you see why we're so dysfunctional. Um, I, it's not a dysfunction, though, and that's that, I, I think it, that's the opposite thing. I think you guys are functional and... You have a better head on your shoulders than everybody else because you've been through the most intense situations that one could possibly be in. Whereas the people that I don't find functional in life are the people who haven't been through any situations, but they think they have. Right. And, you know, the Karens of the world where you're just like, you're, the world's going to end because of X. And you're like, man, that is but not you, important. You, this, is the one, this is the one thing that I'll, I'll put on you. What a privilege is for you. I grew up with it of, of a long stint. My, my, my grandfather served in the First World War. You know, I had family members in the Second World War. My father was in Vietnam. My had an uncle was in Korea. I mean, we've had our family in every war. I, I'm a son of the Revolution. We can date our family. All Same, by the way. Yeah. I, uh, all my, I right. can go back to World War I for my great-grandfather. Right. Yeah. That my, my, my family's names, my dad's family name, our surname is fought in every war this country's ever had. This is the first war. This one, the global war on terrorism, the guys in Afghanistan and Iraq, and guys like you that have taken a step out of your world and the movie world that you could probably be making a hell of a lot more money doing your thing over there, that now the American populace or the world can finally talk about the things that my dad couldn't talk about. You know, they weren't allowed to sit and talk about the things that we just talked about on the radio or anywhere. It wasn't sure. accepted. You know, now we can that you know, we do have problems. Uh, our veterans, and if they're listening you know, out there, that you know, we want to help. We don't want to see you guys in trouble. That's our brethren. That's it. That's there's life after that, you know. And you use that as a, we use you guys like you guys as a vehicle to say, hey, let's talk about it, you know. And and I watch what these guys with Matt and Jared and Dan does. I see the humor side of it every day. Yeah. But how many of the guys that connect to that and say, you know what, man, I remember those days, or I remember this, or I remember that, or I had that story, or whatever, to bring them back into the fold what we're trying to do because we don't like to lose because we don't ever leave a buddy in the bush we never leave our fallen comrades behind and that's what you have that's what you're doing that's what you guys are doing here with this that's saying hey we're here you know pick up the phone call somebody you know that that number that we lose every day is just a terrible and it was just i just watched something they were talking about the other day that we lose every day of our veterans it's just horrible uh, and that's why Jared created the group. Yeah. Um, never drink alone, and that's what Drinking Bros is. A lot of people think hey, it's just fucking drinking or partying. No, it, it, no, it wasn't. It's not, it it not wasn't why I, it started. I, but uh, and then, or you could listen to a podcast. Right. That was the other por- portion of it. Of like, hey man, if you can't get online or wherever you are in the world, you can either go to Facebook or listen to a podcast or you know 
uh, and hop back in it. Um, you did the drinking bro of the week on the news uh, last week. Um, for this week, who was the guy you were talking about that you lost? Um, uh, that Zachary, Zach? Zachary Blake Tomzak. Yeah. Um, we lost him September 27th. 25th. 25th. 2017, yeah. 2017. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you want to make him the drinking bro of the week? Yeah. I want to make him the hero of the world, man. He was a good kid. Other than him being a 49er fan, I mean, everything else with him was perfect. Ah, did you listen to the sports <laughs> show? Dan's high on the 49ers this year. He's picked them every show. week. Uh, They're well, undefeated. That's because he buys Nikes and, he, and he's going to let the fro grow out. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I kneel. When, when I play Madden at home whenever the anthem comes oh, on. Yeah. I kneel for the anthem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. Nah, uh, Tommy, Tommy was a solid kid, man. He was. He's, he's funny, articulate. Uh, the morning before he got killed, um, I remember going over the Stillers had just played the, uh, that's right, the Stillers. Stillers, yeah. The Stillers, for all you would be want to be Stiller Calm fans. Calm down, Donnie Iris. Get hey, to your don't story. They do be talking about Donnie Iris. Don, I go all WDB <laughs> on you. Um, they had, uh, Stillers had just played the 49ers. Stillers had beat them, and, and I'd walked over to his little, <laughs> his little jack shack he had yep. for the corner. <laughs> and I took my camera and I took a picture of him and he had this big shit eating grin on his face and we went out and pulled that nonsense and he ended up getting shot and getting killed. And um now I still have that picture. And he's just he was such a good kid and you ask yourself why. You know, why him? Of all the uh, not to say I'd want to lose any of them, but sure. you know, why him? I mean, why why'd it have to be him? I mean he was so perfect. I mean he's just he's a beautiful boy. He he just he was just a great person, and um, you know, coming home and his wife Beth Ann, that's back in uh, where she's originally from in West Virginia, yeah. yeah, Morgantown, and she still gives me shit when I drive through and I don't stop and see her. But you know, good people. But you know, to lose somebody like that, um, but it happens. You know, we have to accept that that it's a job we chose. You know, but it was drafted. It's a profession that we wanted, and when you go in harm's way, people are going to get hurt. You're going to lose your friends. Um, and all we do is try to honor them for the rest of our lives. They gave the ultimate sacrifice to what we stand for as a country. Um, I don't give a shit what your political affiliation is or what you feel or how you feel about the president. But these folks out there from the day we started to the day we are here, the guys that go overseas and defend our country, they give their lives. They are real heroes. Um, their families are heroes. Uh, their mothers are heroes, their wives, you know, their husbands, because we've lost a lot of women, um, soldiers or airmen, and, and those are the real heroes of this country, not some asshole that sits on TV and talks about Guam being flipped up uh, upside down. That, that's not a hero. That's just an idiot. Right. I mean, <laughs> these are the real people. And you are. You are, you're, you are an American hero yourself. Well, Gene right? Vandenham is. I'm not. Uh, sure. But I've played a hero. I've played a hero. <laughs> Hey, man, thanks for coming back, Jeff. Uh, for real, this was a fucking great episode, dude. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're just one of those dudes who's just endlessly entertaining, uh, and I greatly appreciate it. I know Dan was super amped that you were here. I almost saw a smile out of him when he said you were coming, so uh, that's, that's as best as you could hope for in this world, yep. out of Dan. That's, that's a, a half yeah. smile. A half smile. My my uh, my range emotional why emotionally, most people are from 10 to negative 10. Yeah. I'm from like... Zero to point something point on three. either side. Man, yeah, point three. Yeah. Well, then, well yeah. I would just give you just one tidbit about Dan. Uh oh. Uh oh, boy. Here we go. MLB baseball on PlayStation. Yeah. You need to make it harder because this is the only guy that I know that mastered that game. He's a master of, of, of all things baseball. Of, of all oh, things no, baseball. Well, not all things. We, 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 we went later tonight. We'll go round and round about baseball trivia. But when yeah. it came to that game, and we would play that game against yeah. each other, I mean, this boy, I mean, and I pride myself to be able to play like NHL. Sure. Or MLB. No. Best in the biz. Mess. No. Yeah, he, he knew everything I was throwing. It hit, <laughs> it hit it all out. I, can, I guess the pitches, like you haven't been to a baseball game with me yet. We still got to do that. Yeah. But you've seen my ability to call individual games, which is very difficult to do, I think. He's like me. He, it is. We he, might we might do a special. He keeps on it. a yeah. scorecard and he'll count pitches and knows exactly where the pitch is going yep. to be and where it, why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're, we'll probably end up at a Yankees game here in a couple Ooh. weeks. But uh, yeah. well, we're going to go to a playoff game. The playoff game. I'll be so rooting the for the other team. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, maybe whomever not. it is. Now it'll be Houston, and it's going to be. I'll be rooting for Houston. All right. I want to see that Houston. Well, I would love to see a Yankees Braves World Series a rematch. 
Same. Of 98. Wait yeah. a minute. $330 million didn't make it to the playoffs this year? Oh, you talking about Bryce Harper? No. <laughs> no. He's at home right now. He's playing <laughs> no. golf. Well, w, it didn't work out. Get Washington made it. I know. Uh, I saw that. He didn't. He I didn't. love that Washington made it and Philly didn't. I'd fucking love that's that. Epic, that. That's epic, uh, isn't it? That's amazing. my little get dip fucked, at $330 Bryce million. Harper. It's amazing. I actually like Bryce Harper, but get fucked. So do I. <laughs> so do I. Uh, for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, uh, Jeff, thanks again for being uh, here. Thank you. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good nights, everyone. <laughs>